Food Heals Podcast, Episode 73. If you show me someone who's broken, there's a real good chance that they've got two relationships in their life that are broken. Mm -hmm. And that's the relationship with plants and the relationship with themselves. Mm. So so true. Mm -hmm. Say that again. (laughs) Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. Today's guest is, dun, 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 drum roll please, Joe Cross. Woo! We're so fortunate to have Joe on our show today because he's only in L.A. for a few days to screen his new film, The Kids Venue, which is all about inspiring young people to make healthier choices. That's right. The film will be screening at several U.S. cities during the month of March, and Joe will be there in person for a Q&A immediately following the film. He will be in Miami March 15th, Atlanta March 16th, Long Island, my birthplace, March 19th, <laughs> yeah. Washington, D.C., March 21st, Philadelphia, March 22nd, Boston, March 23rd, New York, March 24th. He is a busy man. I know. That's a lot right in a row. <laughs> back to back to back. For a full list of all the locations and for tickets, go to the website, thekidsmenutour.eventbrite.com. And I just can't wait to see his new film. You know, for those of you who don't know who Joe is, he's also one of the stars of my film, Food Heals. And I've had the pleasure to interview him three times now. They just get better and better, Susie. Like, this was the best one yet. Yeah, it was great. So inspiring. So much information. I called him a preacher. I don't think he liked that. But I just felt like, preach it. Like, tell the world how important this is. You know, like, mm-hmm. spread your message, which is exactly what he's doing. Such an inspiring man. So Joe is an Australian entrepreneur, author, filmmaker, and wellness advocate. He is most well known for his documentary, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, which is about juicing and how he overcame his chronic uticaria, got off all his medication, and helped some other characters do the same along the way. He is the founder and CEO of Reboot with Joe, a health and lifestyle brand. But before we get to our awesome interview with Joe, we have to tell you about today's sponsor. Our sponsor today is Thrive Market, which is an amazing new company that is changing everything. Are you trying to live a more healthy life but find organic and non-toxic products too expensive or hard to find? Then Thrive Market is the online shopping club for you. It's like Costco meets Whole Foods for everything healthy online. You'll get the best brands and groceries for up to 50% off retail prices. 50% off. Yeah. Ship nationally to your door for free. And right now we have three dogs in the studio and they just got up and started walking around because they're really excited because they know that Thrive Market sells dog treats. Yeah, they like Thrive Market too. (laughs) They're they're promoting it. I know. Also, Thrive Market has all the products that I'm already paying full price for, like Tom's toothpaste, Nutiva coconut oil, Justin's almond butter, Gaia Herbs turmeric, and it's all at a fraction of the cost. And like I said earlier, they have organic dog toys and treats. Too. This That's, is this is my happy place, Susie. It really is. I know. It's incredible. I mean, and our interview with Gnar, people talk a lot about what they want to do. He is making changes in the world for the better. Yeah. I mean, he's really walking the walk. He's walking the walk and he's giving back to low-income families and he's giving them membership. Teachers and military families yeah. and people that deserve to have access to these products. And not eat McDonald's. So they can literally buy the food that they need to create healthy meals at Thrive Market instead of going to their local fast food joint. And brought right to their door. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm so excited about this sponsor. You know, I love working with companies that have good hearts. Me too. And that's why we scored an exclusive discount for Food Heals Nation. You'll never have to pay full price for healthy food again. Go to thrivemarket.com slash foodheals to start your free three-month trial and get 15% off your first order. thrivemarket.com slash foodheals. Next up, our interview with Joe. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. 
All right, today we're here with one of our most exciting guests, Joe Cross. Joe has a new movie, The Kids Menu. After the success of his previous films, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, and Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead 2, both on Netflix, this time Joe is taking on childhood obesity. In this hopeful and inspiring documentary, you will see amazing programs in action, inspiring individuals, paving the way for change, but most of all, kids, children, they're taking the lead and getting healthier options on their own menu. Let's all join Joe's mission to help build a healthier future. Be warned though, when you watch this film, you and your family might be so inspired that you'll find yourself planning your own vegetable garden come spring. (laughs) That's true. All right, we're going to play the trailer. Right now, we have a problem that the loudest voices in this space are critics. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. We've all seen the scare stories. This could be the first generation of children in the United States that lives less than its parents. They tell us it's destroying our country and our children. Nobody is safe from the dangers of the child obesity epidemic. This is about life and death. You might as well be rolling up the kid's sleeve and putting in heroin. Kids are being told the biggest lie they will ever hear in their lives. The problem is getting worse. But just how bad is it? Anybody who tells you we're not making progress doesn't know what they're talking about. I decided to find out what can we do to keep our kids healthy and fight childhood obesity. And what I've discovered will blow your mind. How many schools in America have signs saying, keep your worms happy? Probably not that many. People are less likely to choose breakfast cereal when it's not in its original packaging, because it's like dog food, actually. I want you to put these drinks in order of most sugar to least sugar. And if you get to kids, everybody else will follow. A little article of the kids boycotting the unhealthy food at the middle school. That was so empowering, because we are kids, and how often do you get taken seriously by adults? So who could tell me a plant part? Leaves. Leaves, perfect. <laughs> they get uh, I actually believe that it is kids. They're going to make their own future. It wasn't what I expected. It changed me as a person. And those kids who are like, well, I would never eat that. It, it's in the dirt, and that's weird. And I see how it's growing out the ground, and I'm like, I'm really not going to eat that. It's a lot of stuff I just try, and I end up liking it. At first, I could only cook macaroni and cheese. I'm an organic gardener, OG. If you just put a big bowl of broccoli on the table by itself, I'd blow you off, too. There are 100,000 public schools, and we need to find a way to connect kids to healthy food in each of those schools. That is so cool. Eating something that you created is just an amazing thing to do. And I actually eat tomatoes like candy. Join me and find out what's on the kids' menu. All right, Food Heals Nation, that was a snippet of Joe Cross's trailer for his new film. What's your new film called, Joe? It's called The Kids Menu. The Kids Menu. Welcome. Lovely to be here, guys. Thanks very much for having me on the show. Thanks Thanks. for being here. Yeah. It's great to be back in LA. Great to be on the show. Yeah, we love having you in LA. I saw you at Creation today, which is one of my favorites. Yeah, I was in there on the Make Your Own Juice and uh, made up a Mean Green, which was great. They also do good smoothies, but yeah, no, they're, they're, they're really nice people, actually. But you know, most of the people who own juice bars are really nice people. That's I've true. met them all over the world, and, um, and those guys here in LA are fabulous. Absolutely. All right, so Food Heals Nation, usually most of our listeners know who you are, but for anyone listening who doesn't, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do? Are you sure? So, um, well, I, I'm nearly 50 years of age. In fact, this year I turned 50. And so for most of my life, like up until 40, I was in the world of finance and making money, investing money and trading money and all those things that you see on Wall Street, but mostly from the trading point of view and brokerage point of view. And then I I sort of um, did pretty well in that and and financially I did well, but my my health didn't do too well out of that. I sort of went into that industry at like 185 and by the time I left it, I was 320 in pounds and I was loaded up on lots of medication for a debilitating autoimmune disease and pre-diabetic, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. I mean, you know, I was one bite away from a heart attack, mm-hmm. I'd like to say. Um, and so my, my life was in, my, my, my health was in uh, ruins. 
And so I decided to make a drastic change and leave all that behind and go out and really try and fix myself. Now, I, w- I, I didn't plan on leaving the, the world of finance behind altogether, but at least take a, a, year, out of, a year out and fix myself. And um, I ended up putting a camera on, on that journey just because of, for a laugh, really. I didn't think anyone would want to watch, watch it, but it was in 2007, and that was a time when... I kind of got lucky, like Netflix was doing the red envelopes back then. Their, their Facebook was just very early. There was no Instagram. Twitter, I don't think it started. It might have just got going. And so for me, it was like this opportunity sort of collided. And I mean, YouTube was only two years old, right? And so the opportunity collided where I ended up capturing my transformation and my change from eating and drinking only fruits and vegetables for five months. I did 60 days of drinking juice and I did... 90 days of eating plant food only fruits vegetables nuts beans and seeds and i lost 100 pounds i got off all my medications i turned around my debilitating autoimmune disease and i was like a new man i mean i was fat sick and nearly dead which is the title of my first documentary film right and um then all of a sudden five months later i wasn't and so it was kind of funny or incredible or lucky or however you want to put it all together that we captured this on film and then a gentleman that I met at a truck stop also called me up after I'd done my journey and said that he needed help and I thought this was great that if maybe he would be like the first person to follow me. And he and had the same autoimmune same, disease. Same autoimmune disease, chronic urticaria angioedema. It's a fancy way of saying chronic hives. And so I, you know, through being a bit of a trader, taking risks, I went, you know what, let's go and film this guy in Iowa. And his name is Phil Staples and Phil became a legend and a champion in the film and and the, the same thing I did, we applied to Phil and it worked for him. And so that movie um, took a few years to get it out and it, and it premiered on Netflix in July of 2011. So we're close to five years now. You know, this mm-hmm. July, it's five years since that film has been out. And that was really the the turning point and change. And of course, the economic crisis happened in, in 08 and 09 and I was in the edit and all my friends thought I was crazy. What's Joe doing over in America in some edit studio with <laughs> 500 hours of footage trying to make this movie? Drinking green juice. And, and so, and I had this feeling that it would be big. I had this feeling that this could be a really big, um, a big thing. Um, no one else thought that except my close team that were working in the edit suite with me. But no one else thought it because they hadn't seen it, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I appreciated that. But when it came out, it really had a big impact on lots of lots of things in the world of juice and the world of smoothies and the search words for juice and, you know, juice and machine sales. And then, of course, the Nutra bullet. It used to be called the Magic Bullet, and all of a sudden it's called the Nutra Bullet, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden green drinks were in. It's and totally they in. They're very in right now. They, they weren't in. They weren't, they, I, can, I can assure you they were not in when I was filming this in 07 and 08 across America. Right. Everyone thought I was just drinking swamp water. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of – and now I have a business um, which sort of um, does two things. I have two sort of co- companies, if you like. Um, one is a production company which makes movies, and we've done a second film called Fat Sick and Nearly Dead 2. Which I and love. And now we have this new film out called um, The Kids Menu. And then my other part of my business is called Reboot with Joe, where we have a community and a website, and we um, offer products and services. So that's how we fund it, through through selling selling things like um, advising people which juices to go and get, or we sell advertising there. and. And we also have things called guided reboots where people can go and get a coach and be taken through what I did for 15 days or 30 days. And so that business um, is the sort of, um, they're the two businesses that I have. So that's really it's what I do now. And so, you know, I'm back on the road again now at the beginning of this tour. I'll be on the road for three months now. So all of March, April and May, I'll be, I'll be on the road with a new movie and a new book. And so I've, I've had three films I think five or six books, three apps, um, and I've done numerous uh, talks. And you know, I, I'm I'm very very fortunate. I, I do something I love, and I'm I'm very lucky. Um, you know, there was certainly more money in the financial world than this game. But <laughs> there's this, no money in. <clears throat> there's no money in this, but that's okay. That's okay. This is this is more a passion thing, and this is more about. I I I'm helping. Well, I hope like to think I'm helping a lot more people doing this than I was. Um, back in the old days 
Not to take anything away from that because you know there are lots of people that do that today that are still very generous with their time and money. So, but for me, I'm I'm much much happier doing this. Yeah, I mean, you have an amazing following. I mean, even Susie's Uber driver. All right, let me tell the story to our guests because I did tell Joe. This yeah. is really funny. So on my way over here today, I took an Uber and I was chatting with my Uber driver as I do. And I said, you know, I host a podcast. She said, where are you going? I said, I host a I co-host a podcast. We have a very special guest. Have you ever seen the film Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead? And she just looked at me in the rear view and said, Joe Cross? I'm a super fan. Can I come meet him? So she and she had a green juice in her car. I swear I could not have written that better. Like uh, she just <laughs> That's amazing. And she knew about your new film. Yeah, it's kind of it it really is um it's really bizarre to me for for sort of having this world of really like until I, you know, I mean up until 5 years ago. Um it was never ever thought in my mind that I could ever be recognized doing anything anywhere. And while I'm certainly not a celebrity by any stretch of the imagination, I do have a group of loyal followers, people that are in this space and that have watched the film and have changed their life. And there's, I don't know, there's probably there's probably half a million people that are out there that have given it a crack in some way, shape or form. It doesn't mean they did it all, but they tried. And so, you know, because you, you you go about changing your life and you put you put you make you you make a big commitment like buy a juicer get all the fruits and vegetables I'm going to do what Joe did. It's hard then for that that you not not to remember that guy. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of where that comes from because I'm you know whenever I'm in airports whenever I'm somewhere it's communal. There's something about airports. People think you can approach people in airports more than on a street because you're all you're all sort of all getting stuck. in. Well, you're all getting in these silver tubes together. You know what I mean? So, so and and I, and of course, when I'm on the phone talking, that's when it really resonates because my accent and and voice is very distinctive. And so, when people hear me talking, or I'm in a shop, or I'm somewhere, I can see the heads turn and people come up and ask for a photo or a or a sign. A, something or other and that's nice i mean I, i'm 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 very touched and grateful and it's um it's great i mean I, the, the hard part is the, the mail i get a lot of mail with people asking for support and help and wanting things individualized and that's just unfortunate i just can't deliver on all of that because there's just too many people yeah, and you don't have the time yeah i, I had a full-time employee dealing with just my facebook messages mm-hmm. um one person that was basically doing six hours a day seven hours a day trying to keep up with just the the personal messages on facebook not yeah. not the not the not the um the the, the page this was just the individual yes. messages mm-hmm. and we eventually had to turn it off because it was just too because once you respond, then you get a response back. Yeah, it's a conversation. And, and, and it yeah. goes back and forth. So it's very difficult. I mean, I'd love to be able to help everyone as possible as I could, but it's just, it's just not, not, I'm just not, it's not humanly possible. No, we totally understand because we get so many messages and emails. And we, I always tell Food Heals Nation, if you haven't heard back from me, you are on a list. You are on a spreadsheet. We will get back to. We want to help you. But you have gotten to this point where it's absolutely not possible. And so all you can do is continue to make these films that everyone can see and just choose how to incorporate that into their own life because anyone can do this. You mm. showed that. You know, like you said, you are not a doctor. You are not going into this with this expertise I think too like also the fact that you went through it you had your autoimmune issue you were overweight you went through your own personal experience that resonated with people if you were perfectly healthy from the get-go just telling people preaching go juice I don't think you would have gotten the same response well I don't think you can tell people to do anything in fact I, I think people actually hate being told what to do and I think it's the one thing I made very very it was very important to me when I made that first film and every film since is that it's not about preaching. It's not about telling, and it's very much about showing and saying, "This is the journey I'm on. You can watch it or not. You can change the channel. You can go to another Netflix show. It's, it's very easy to do." Um, but I'm on a journey, and if you're interested in my journey, here's what I'm trying to do. So every person I spoke to and offered green juice to, I didn't sort of say, "Oh, mate, you know, you need to do this or you should do this." Those sorts of things don't work. I mean, people, it really falls. There might be subtle words where you're just meaning good, but I think it can have a very negative impact Mm -hmm. when someone is telling you what you should do with Mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talked in my second movie about this last two feet of freedom, which is the distance between your your hand and your mouth. And it's, you know, it's about two feet for the (laughs) average person, right? Mm -hmm. And that that is a very sacred um, piece of space between your hand and your mouth. And 
when anyone gets in the middle of that and starts telling you what you can eat, what you can't eat, what you should eat, you start ruffling a whole lot of feathers. And, you know, no one wants the government in there. No one wants their wife or husband or partner or, you know, children or parent. They don't want it. That people want to, you know, there's not too many things we can do in the world where we can do it without being, you know, judged or, or um, you know, fined. You know, there's, there's <laughs> rules. There's lots of rules in the world we live in. But there are no rules. If I want to go home tonight after this podcast and order 20 pizzas, I can do it. There's no law against that. You might um, get some free stuff along the way if you order from Domino's <laughs> or something. Well, I don't think I could eat 20 pizzas. I'd struggle. I'd struggle. I used to be able to eat three or four, but I, I, I'd struggle to do that. But the point is, there's no law against it. And so I think this is a very important space. I mean, you know, we, we can talk more about it later, but, you know, your 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 message in your podcast, Food Heals, um, absolutely. and But food also takes away a lot of our health. So it can heal, right? But it can also cause a lot of pain. That was too long of a title, so we just no. I, 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 it's much better. We consider optimistic it. and positive girls much better. But but so but once you start telling people that you know that's you know then you start saying to mums and dads, you know that they start realizing the food they've been giving to their kids is actually causing a lot of harm. When that sort of light goes on, you don't they don't want to be told they've done the wrong thing. They want to work that out for themselves. And when they do that then change can can take place. Absolutely. One of my favorite things about Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead 1, the first one, is that first it was a journey about you. And then by circumstance, you just happened to meet someone who had the same rare autoimmune disease as you. And because you were going through this, you were able to help him as well. And then what I love about Fat, Sick, and Nearly Did too is we realized we weren't finished with Phil. I would love if you could tell us a mm. little bit about that. Because healing is a journey. It's yeah. not a destination we get to and we're done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so what you're alluding to there is that Phil was a truck driver who was 420-odd pounds when we met him um, standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona, of all places, just like <laughs> the song. And um, it, was, it, was a, it was a truck stop. And... So I had met and spoke to um, around 350 Americans across this journey, across the country, as I, as I juiced my way across the country. And I gave my business card and my phone number to every one of them saying, hey, if you're interested in what I'm doing and follow up, you know, because as I said earlier, I wasn't telling him what to do. I was just saying this is what I'm doing. And it must have resonated with Phil because I made a juice with him in the back of my truck at, at the truck stop. And um, he kind of like, hmm, thought this is all right. And then it was May, so I'd met him in November, so he called me and left a message in May. So, you know, six months later, he must have kept my number, and um, he decided to call, and he asked for help. Now, he was the only person out of all those 350 people that I'd spoken to that actually called. So we were done with the movie. We'd, we'd finished our what we call our first movie um, and the journey. We had the story. We had the arc. We had everything done, and I thought, you know what? This is an interesting um, situation here. It's kind of like, you know, if you liked, I love that movie Forrest Gump when he starts running across America and mm-hmm. then someone follows. And I kind of thought, well, my journey was that I was like the forest in the in going across, and he was the first person ready to follow. Yeah. So I thought it was really important to try and capture that. And so I didn't think the doctor would let him do it. I thought he'd be in, you know, worse shape. But we went out there, and I thought it could be something in the credits. Like, you know, we've already made the movie, so it could be in the in the closing credits. Oh, and remember that guy, Phil? And here he is, you know. But as it turned out, he, he started juicing and he drank for 10 days and then he went 15 and then he went 20 and 30 and then he went to 60 and he did 61. He did one day longer than me. And, <laughs> and, 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 and that's Over great. Overachiever. Yeah, yeah. I just show you up. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was happy with that. Um, and, and he went uh, from 420 pounds to like 220 pounds. Got married and... And his life over a period of sort of 18 months, two years, um, and, and even two and a half years, he was in great shape. Yeah, he's running in the documentary. Yeah, he yeah. looks so healthy. Yeah, it wasn't like he just lost the weight and then it all came back on when he stopped. He was two and a half years mm-hmm. um, in, in great shape. In fact, um, he started this in 08, and we brought him in for a screening in, in the middle of 10, and he was fabulous. I mean, he was in great shape, so... And then he got married that around that time as well. But look, the marriage didn't work out, and it ended up being quite a crisis for him. 
It was his third one, and he really thought that this was the one, and it mm. didn't last very long, and it ended badly, and he felt um, like a lot of people do. It's a setback, you know, and it's a big setback, and he went to ground, and he cut all support and all of his his connections and it was in turn it wasn't just the food that was keeping him healthy it was the connections Mm -hmm. that were a big part of that Um, and so when he cut himself off he got lonely and his best friend became Wendy's and he loaded up on Wendy's and he went back to his old ways Mm -hmm. and it took you know a year or nine months to virtually get back to where he started um, from locking himself away and not telling anybody and he was ashamed to come out and all of a sudden it's just a vicious circle and his whole support network crumbled because he cut it off. I mean, he, he left town. He packed up and left town. Yeah, well, depression will do that, yeah. right? And so um, we caught up with him and we wanted to be transparent. We wanted to show him. So we caught up with him. And we didn't know that he was in this state, by the way, because we were like saying, hey, Phil, we want to catch up and, and get the new get the new uh, you and put you in the movie and that. And he kept putting it off. And so... We kind of realized, well, something's going on here if he's putting off the, the interviews. Mm-hmm. And that's when we found out. So we wanted to make sure that we, you know, documentary world is about transparency and truth. And so we showed him back to where he was effectively. And, and we went through the whole idea about our community and support. And uh, that was very much a part of the second film. And so I, the way I think about it is Phil inspired so many people. That, that it was a great time for him to sort of reach out and ask for other people to help inspire him. And so... You know, he's back on a good track. He's not he's not right back where he was in, in the great shape, but he's not as bad as he was. And so, like anyone, he's on a journey. Yeah. And, you know, we're all jugglers. Um, I, I like to think that's kind of what we do as being a human. We're, we're all juggling. And predominantly, we juggle five things. We juggle family and friends. We juggle love. We juggle career. We juggle health. And we juggle ourself. And that can be self, can be your spirituality, your religion, whatever, whatever you want. But it's about self, and and juggling five things is, you know, it's not easy. And some of us are really good at like maybe three of those things, and not so good in the other two. And so we tend to let them drop by and just try and juggle three things, which is easier than juggling five, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, what ends up happening though is those ones you discard, you can't not tend to them you can't not nurture them you can't not try and get them back on track because if you leave them um without any uh any attention for too long it brings the whole thing down and so uh, you know phil's got some juggling to do it's not just about what goes into his mouth it's not just about choosing you know a carrot over a piece of bread or um, tofu over fish and steak, whatever. It's not a better, just about that. There's a lot more things that, that so many of us have to deal with and stress and lack of sleep and, you know, anxiety and self-worth and relationships. They, they all play a huge role into our food choices, our health and to, and, and where we end up. So, so it's, you know, it's a constant juggle. Well, you know, what I thought about Phil's story, and I loved, I loved that you came back and fat, sick and nearly dead too, and said, here's the truth and he's not done yet. Because I think that transparency, like you said, is so important and I just honor you for showing that to the world because that was my journey. And I'm not the same as Phil. I didn't have chronic uticaria and I wasn't severely overweight, but I discovered food and nutrition first and juicing. And I thought, this is the answer. This is all there is. And then it took years for me to realize, oh my God, my emotions matter. My thoughts are things. Yes, food heals. It also destroys. And so does my mind. What am I thinking every day? So I was going through all this depression and suppressing it and going, well, why aren't I better? I'm doing everything right. But I wasn't dealing with the root cause. I, I had dealt with the root nutrition cause. Fix that. Feeling fantastic. Feeling better but there was still something lingering. So until I discovered that I had to really heal my emotions, I was up and down. So I'm like, I'm wonderful. And then I'm back to eating bad because I'm depressed, right? And I didn't make the connection at first. And so I think making that connection is so important because food will take you so far, juicing will take you so far, and then emotions will take you the rest. Or maybe you start with the emotions and then you got to get your nutrition in check, right? Yeah. And so that's what I loved about, first of all, I was obsessed with Fat Sick and Nearly Dead 1, the first one. Then when I saw two, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's great. I appreciate that. And our third film, which is 
um, called the kids menu. Yes. We take a, a a complete change, and we don't we don't focus on juice, and we don't focus on transformation at all. And we we try to do because you know as a filmmaker and storyteller, you wanna you wanna do something different. You wanna try and push the envelope and see how the audience will respond to something different. And you know it's always in the hands of the audience, and you don't know. Uh, and so I'm at the very early stages of this new baby being released and unwrapped and shown to the world and uh, we'll see how it goes. I've, I've done one screening in Australia. I did that about 10 days ago in a beautiful uh, part of the world called Edelong Beach, which is an hour north of Sydney, hour and 15 minutes drive north of Sydney. And it was a beautiful Sunday night in an old cinema and it was, I don't know, in, in, in Fahrenheit, it was like 90 degrees. So it was pretty hot. <laughs> we were all in shorts and t-shirts. And uh, I did think that the audience would probably be a little bit not as engaged because it's very American. I focus on American issues in this new film Mm -hmm. because I didn't have the budget to really go around the world. It's Mm -hmm. more expensive, as you know, with making movies when you travel into foreign countries. And so, but surprisingly, the uh, 90 people in the cinema that night all, you know, they loved it. I asked anyone that didn't like it. I really say, you know, you're helping me if you be honest. Tell me you don't like it, but we didn't get anyone who didn't like it. And the fact that um, the issues that were raised there are universal, and and you know maybe it's a little bit different in China and India, but generally speaking, the mm-hmm. Western world, um, you know, the same challenges in in the US are going to be in Canada and UK, Australia and Germany and 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 Spain and so on. It's it's going to be interesting to see how the audience um, takes on this new new project and how they how they respond to it. Well, I'm so excited. My background is in public health. And so we deal with a lot of what are the kids eating and what is in their lunch boxes and what are they being served at at schools. And it's terrifying in some cases. And it's the same with hospitals and a lot of places in the US. Hospitals are the absolute worst. Yeah. And, you know, and so I'm really excited about this film. So Susie and I are coming on Thursday. Um, We're bringing some of our favorite influencers. So we're going to check it out and we're all going to give it glowing reviews. I know we're just going to love it. (laughs) Don't worry. Well, let's, yeah. You're allowed not to, okay? In in the world of internet transparency, you're allowed not to. Well, we appreciate that, but I I just don't think it's going to happen. No, I I, I highly doubt it. (laughs) Because of your track record. If you were brand new... Yeah, well, I I have a really good team. And and, and I think that um, what I try to do with our films is we try to um, be very optimistic. Not the sense that, oh, we can only do optimistic stories, but let's find the story... You know, you know, pointing out problems is a really easy thing to do. I mean, I, I noticed this in the election cycle that we're in now in America. You know, there's a lot, it, you can create a lot of fear um, and it's easy to pull things down. It's easy to say things are broken, look at that and point out all the problems. Oh yeah, it's way easier yeah, it's to very, build something up. Than actually to come up with a solution. And so what I wanted to do in this new movie was, okay, yes, we all know that there is a problem when it comes to obesity and, and, and the effect, the knock-on effect um, of the health factors and health risks that that presents to humans. And we know Americans have a problem. We know Australians have a problem. We know the UK have a problem. We know that most of the Western world that, that adopts this lifestyle um, of eating processed foods sitting in chairs a lot of the time and using cars to get around, not getting enough sleep, being more disconnected than ever before. Uh, we know that, that when when people live like that, that we are going to not be as healthy as if we didn't. And so it's it's a given that we have this problem with humans and we also have little humans, which we call children <laughs> and kids, and they're going to have the similar problems if mum and dad are living that way and, and and feeding them that way and if they're the system, be it schools, be it wherever, feeds them that way. So we all know there's a problem and so we didn't want to spend too much time on that because it's kind of like a given. Mm-hmm. You know, the sky is blue, so there it is. <laughs> what we wanted to do was to showcase all the amazing things that are going on which are tackling that head on and really showing uh, positive results and feedback and doing it with ease in the sense that, I mean, there's a lot of hard work going on, but it's doing it in terms of the results with the kids 
they are not feeling like this has been jammed down their throat. This is like, I'm loving this. I'm enjoying this. This is what we do. This is normal. This is natural. This is this is this is it. It's not like you know you have to do this and go to your room if you don't eat that piece of broccoli. You know, it's not like that. And so that's what we wanted to show in this movie. So we went around the country and we looked at a whole bunch of initiatives via what families are doing, what communities are doing, what schools are doing, what government is doing, what activists are doing, and we went and had a look at all those and we said right boom 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 these half a dozen are worth showing and sharing and we went and put cameras on people and interviews and that's what this really film this film is this film is a showcase of all the amazing things that are going on and so what we hope happens is that when you show positive things and when you show things that are that you know you hope are entertaining and educational and inspirational and funny and all those things when it all comes together even if you're really educated on this space even if you really know what's going on and we've had a half a dozen people that I would consider really on top of their game with this and they have said to me wow I learned three or four things that I didn't know and that's really that that's the that that's the real aim for us so that you can make a film that no matter where you are on the spectrum you can actually get something out of it. If you're someone who doesn't know anything about it, you can learn a lot. And if you're someone who's an expert, you can still learn a lot. And so that's what I think we were fortunate enough with all the hard work. And I've got a great team that works for me um, that you know deserve much more credit than me. They, they um, work tirelessly to research, to find, and then you know we go out there and capture it. So, so that's, that's really where the, that's the DNA of this film. Very cool. There's a school in Calabasas. I don't know if you, if you went there, um, where they serve all the children vegan food, and they have this really forward-thinking way of teaching the kids with art classes. And I know Rich Roll's kids go there. Right. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't heard of it. But but like I mean, this is a good, great example of so many wonderful things that are going on. Um, and and I don't want to ruin the movie too much, but what what we saw was working was when there is a connection between the kids and the earth Mm -hmm. when there's a garden Mm -hmm. gardens are wonderful things gardens are amazing things and kids like getting dirty kids like (laughs) perfect yes they do funnily enough kids like worms and so do you know what it's also actually it's good for them it's good for their immune system of course it is of course it is of course it is um and so when you when you um see children that uh, plant, nurture, allow to grow, pick, and then they've taken that process and then they've been taught how to prepare and maybe chop and then cook. Um, and it's all on them. And we're talking about kids that are seven, eight, nine, ten years of age. When they've had that experience, they're, they're hooked for life. I mean, that's not like something that... Oh, I'm bored with this now. I want a new PSP 72 or whatever the latest video game right. is. Mm-hmm. This is something that they're into and they get it and then it sticks with them. Um, you know, we saw kids in Chicago that were 17 and 18 years of age that have never had greens in their life right. wow. because they think they're nasty. Yep. Like the bottom line is somewhere along the way, they were told to eat steamed broccoli with nothing on it, mm-hmm. and it just taste buds remembered nasty. Yeah, and and that's fair enough. You know that this this can happen, and so, you know, they were horrified at the idea of pulling something out of the ground <laughs> that had dirt on it <laughs> that you would then run water over and then put in your mouth. I mean, that's just like I mean, right. who does that? But once they they muscled up the courage and did it and after working in this this windy city harvest farm project in the you know in the in the middle of very low income south side of chicago these kids were convincing their parents i mean they were taking home all the produce and making up salads and they were into it like really into it and that's game changer stuff absolutely you know and so the idea of being, you know, connected to the earth and to to the soil and to the the harvesting and the growing, I mean that that that's a big deal, you know. 
That's a big deal. It is a big deal. And can we talk about um, one of the biggest, let's say, arguments against this type of work is access and affordability. So we have people and families that are saying, I want to eat healthy, but I'm not able to because either A, I don't have access or B, I can't afford to eat mm-hmm. healthy or both. Um, and so it sounds like you are telling, helping people plant gardens and doing this affordably and locally. How can a regular person who would have that argument, how can they eat healthily and affordably? Okay, so let's take the the first point is is that if you're going to do this on your own, it's very difficult because like when you do things on your own without support, without community, it's actually more expensive. Sure. Because you don't have a team effort going in. So like if if a hundred families in one neighbourhood decided to get together with a farmer and buy all these greens and have all these farm produce come, they're going to get a better deal than if just one family decides to negotiate with the farmer. Got okay? it. So the first thing to, to, to realize is that there's power in numbers. Yeah. That's what corporations do. Buy Corpor- in bulk. Corporations, they <laughs> buy in bulk and they acquire other companies to get synergies and achieve economies of scale. So this can be done at the local community level with 20 families, 30 families getting together and, and doing that, like, you know, I went to schools in Encinitas, not far from where we are now here in LA, and, and they've got a, a, a farming project at their school where they've got an abundance of food where they're giving it away to the community. So community is key to bringing price down. You want to be on your own. You want to be one out and do everything on your own. It's much more difficult because you don't have the buying power. You've got to go to the Whole Foods. You've got to go to the Kroger. You've got to go to Trader Joe's. You've got to go to the farmer's market. You've got to make that journey yourself, and you've got to then allocate the time to actually go and get the produce. Then you've got to allocate the time to prepare it. And then there's all of a sudden the costs are not so much in the price of the produce it's more about cost of your time Mm -hmm. it takes to prepare and to gather and to do all of that so i think that that you know i was up in cornell university at um, up in ithaca in upstate new york and i was in a classroom and this is in the film where kids are learning they're going to say these kids are you know college so they're like 19 20 and they're learning how to make a healthy balanced meal less than five bucks Per meal, and it can be done. I saw I saw forty kids doing it, so it can be done for God, less than I need five dollars. Do <laughs> now, now we've got to understand what the definition of healthy is too, because you know we've got to be careful that we are not skewing this way too extreme, because there is a there is you know a certain school of thought out there as to how do you define what is healthy. Like this is a this is a very confusing um, calibration as to what is healthy because it's confusing. You might have some people say that you know eating animal product is healthy and other people saying it's not healthy. People saying you should have butter. People saying you shouldn't have butter. Right. People saying coffee is good. Coffee's not good. Eggs are good. Eggs are not good. So if you know, and and I spend a lot of time on this, and I get confused a lot of the time. <laughs> so you know, good luck. Someone who's got four or five kids, a husband and wife team that are working two jobs right. that are bringing in maybe you know seventy thousand dollars between them, you know, with a mortgage and trying to get a college fund going and you know two cars and gas and everything else, all the other demands of life. Good luck on them keeping up with things. So I think we just got to be careful about what is healthy and what isn't. And you know, I think that that the new government standards, believe it or not, of, of what a healthy plate looks like is a pretty good job. I mean, I think finally we got this pyramid out of the game and we've mm-hmm. got this healthy plate, which kind of, you know, is half fruits and vegetables and grains and a quarter um, uh, protein. And and I think that sort of is a, is a good measurement. And, you know, so it, you can do, you can make, you can fill that plate for five bucks a day. If you want to live, you know, on a high plant-based diet and just plants, it might be a little bit more expensive than that, mm-hmm. okay? But that's, you might think that you're spending a lot more money, but in actual fact, in the long run, you need the cash up front to be able to do this, but in the long run, it's going to be a lot cheaper because yeah. you're not going to get as sick and you're not going to have as many days off. And there's lots of other factors, and it's also it's also not costing the environment as much either. Yes. So so that's, that's that. Now, on access, um, once again... Uh, 
definitely there are food deserts out there and, right. and I've seen them and you know some... and they're down the street from where we are now where there's yep. 20 Whole Foods in our vicinity and then 10 miles away there are zero mm. yeah. you know and look Whole Foods when they go in there, there is there is the I mean I, I saw the one of the, the executives of Zillow talking on CNBC the other day and they have a thing called the Starbucks effect and the Whole Foods effect mm-hmm. on real estate when if you're, if, if you're within a proximity of a Starbucks or a Whole Foods, you have an average of a 9 or 10% increase in value in your property mm-hmm. because people want that access. Yep. So a Whole Foods going into a poor area actually gentrifies the city and a lot of that, sorry, that area. Right. And a lot of the poor people get pushed out right. because they can't afford to be there. Right. So I, I hear that. Now, how we solve that one, that's a difficult one to solve. But... City lots are being turned into local farms. Once again, it takes a village. This is not one person. So it's a group thing. It's a community thing. And it's happening all over the country. Yeah. And one of the great things about America is, you know, and, and I think you get this when you fly over America, is that, you know, you have a third of the nation, which is the East Coast, is a forest. You have the middle part, which is like a farm, and then you have the west part, which is like a desert. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of arable land in this country, and we, you know, it's it's something that can be done. Um, There's the technology today that it's it's there's very few places where you can't do this. But once again, it takes it takes team effort, and so that's hopefully what this movie will do. It'll show people that you can do it. once again, things are not easy. It's not like a wave of magic wand. All of a sudden, you know, you'll you'll get broccoli and cucumbers and tomatoes coming out. You know, <laughs> but there's a bit of work involved. But once the systems are in place and once it's going, um, you know, it, it, it can work. So um, when you did Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, you ha- you made join the reboot so that everyone who wanted to juice together could join a community and everyone could juice. Do you have something similar set up with this film? No, I don't, because the amount of effort and work and funding it requires to do that back end, I just simply just don't have. And so I figured that what we've got is we've got a resource guide that these groups are already doing it. That's mm-hmm. what they do. So by showcasing them, we're going to allow people who want to follow up with those groups of people, whether it's the East Hampton Wellness Foundation or whether it's um, the, the school down in Encinitas, wherever we are, whatever we're talking about, um, Food Corp, whatever group we, we, we showed, we're going to allow, you know, have a directory of reaching out. And I think these, these organisations are excited about that, in, in, that interest that's going to be shown. That is so exciting. All right, we'll be right back with Joe's tips for how to do a reboot. Food Heals Nation, if you're like us, you care a lot about the food that you put into your body because you know that food heals. The problem is that good, healthy food can be extremely expensive, but it doesn't have to be. That's why we were thrilled to discover Thrive Market. ThriveMarket.com is like the Costco for everything healthy online. That's right. It's an online shopping club offering the best brands and groceries up to 50% off retail prices. Ship nationally for free. They have brands that I buy all the time like Simply Organic, Garden of Life, Dr. Bronner's, Tom's, Nutiva, 7th Generation, Gaia, and so many more. So basically everything I'm already buying at Whole Foods, right? Exactly, but at 25 to 50% off. And you can easily filter everything by your preferences. Gluten-free, vegan, raw, non-GMO, organic, and even fair trade. But what I love most about Thrive Market is their charitable cause. For every paid membership, ThriveMarket.com donates a free membership to a low-income family, a teacher, or a military family. How awesome is that? This is a game changer, Food Heals Nation, because you never have to pay full price for healthy foods again. That's why we scored an exclusive discount for you. Yes, so check out Thrive Market and get two months free membership plus 15% off your first order. Join the movement at thrivemarket.com slash foodheals. You are listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. 
All right, Food Heals Nation, we're back with Joe Cross, who has a new movie, The Kids Menu. It's heading to 13 cities across the U.S. We're going to tell you how you can see all of the screenings, but first, we're going to talk about how to do a reboot. So what's a reboot? A reboot is a period of time where you check out from what is normal sort of behavior of eating food and um, drinking whatever you drink. And so it really is a period of time where I like to think about it a little bit like a time travel. If you think about time travel, uh, way back when we had periods of time where there was feast and famine. Mm -hmm. We don't have too many famines now, but we've got a lot of feasting going on. And I think we've sort of somewhere along the line dropped the ball on this idea of the famine, of this going without for periods of time. And I'm not talking about starving ourselves. I'm talking about controlled a period of fasting. And fasting generally is, 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 is considered water only. And, and, and so let's, if we talk strictly water fasting, I've done that. And look, there are benefits to it, but it, it's not, I don't think it's ideal um, for everybody. When we talk about juice fasting... We're talking about extracting the water from plants. In other words, think about it as drinking water that's filtered through a plant. So if you take some pineapple and take some watermelon and take some cucumber and some celery and some kale and you squeeze it or extract the water that's trapped in the cellulose of the plant, out comes a whole bunch of different colors, green, red, orange, purple, yellow colors that really are the sunlight that's been harnessed during the uh, photosynthesis um, stage of the of the plant growing and it's in that sunlight it's in that color that we find trapped lots of micronutrients um photonutrients and and vitamins and minerals and sugars and 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 some proteins that are all have all been trapped in the plant and that's really what juicing is and so when you go on a juice fast you are drinking water that's filtered through plants you're also drinking a lot of normal water but you're getting a lot of nutrition. like a, You're really supercharging your body with phytonutrients. Now, you are not putting fiber into your body, which really is the trigger that sends your body into this state of, oh my God, Joe, you're not eating. Because it's the, it's, it's the constant fiber that we're putting in our body, whether it's the, through animal product or whether it's through eating plants or however we're, however we're eating that requires the body to break down and digest food. So blending, for example, when you have a Nutribullet or a Ninja or a Vitamix or a Breville Boss blender or whatever, any of these machines, that's not juicing. What that is, is that's outsourcing the chewing to a machine. That is allowing the machine to break it all down instead of your teeth so that you can then swallow it. And remember, with most of these, these sorts of blending, you need to add a liquid to make it more drinkable. Right. So really blending is much more like eating food. Juicing is much more like drinking water. Mm-hmm. So the two are very, very different. Both are good because drinking is good and eating is good, okay? But they're both different. And so a reboot generally is a period of time between 5, 10, 15, 30, or even 60 days where you decide to drink water only filtered through plants. Now, the first three days is very, very tough because this is your body trying to say to you, um, this is not normal, you need to eat. And that's a, very, that, that's a really important thing. That's the safety net that we have. It's like human instinct. If you haven't been eat, eating, your body starts to think, well, hang on a second, Joe hasn't eaten for like 24 hours. We're going to make sure Joe focuses on food because if Joe forgets about food, we'll, we'll all die, all our cells, and Joe will die. He needs to eat. Um, by the way, that period of time is probably 250 days before he's going to die without any food. But still, you know, they jump on it early. And so after two days, they're really starting to get a bit agitated. And so the, the crankiness, the headaches, the tiredness, the, the withdrawals, the grumpiness, the lack of concentration, all is coming in. By the third day, well, the body is just saying, this is, you know, DEFCON 5. We need to, you know, alert, <laughs> alert Will Robinson. You've got to, like, you know, fix this. Yeah. And so it throws everything by the kitchen sink at you to try and get you to eat. 
Now, if you can break through that, that three-day period on average for most people, something magical happens on the fourth day, which is the body realizes that famines are part of the plan. And so it sort of says, right, this isn't Joe's fault. It's because he's not eating. The environment around Joe has changed. We gave him all of these signals to eat. We gave him 72 hours ahead of and he never ate a morsel mm-hmm. of food in his mouth. So maybe it's not his fault. In fact, it probably isn't his fault, and he's on the savannah where there's no food around. Right. It's nature. It's not our choice. <laughs> Correct. It's like this is the environment's change. So now the body says, right, well, we need to survive because everything about us is surviving. So we have to get out of the cave. We need to get down on the savannah, and we've got to walk 50 miles so we can find food. Mm-hmm. So let's give Joe all this energy to make him feel good. <gasps> That just made so much sense to me. I oh, never put that together. Yeah, and like I have to point out that in Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead 2, there's an animation that is so beautifully done that explains this concept. And that's the only way I understand what you're saying is because of that animation. Yeah. It's and so, so good. And so now, because you're in survival mode, all of your senses are on high alert. So your eyesight, your hearing, your smell, your touch, um, everything's on high alert to try and find food. And of course, if you're male, your reproductive uh, abilities sort of drop away because there's not a lot of uh, benefit in trying to reproduce when there's no food around. So your your feminine side comes out much more. Your masculine dominant aggressive side drops. And I, f- I found that in the making the movie myself when I was on my long reboot is that I used to get road rage, but anyone cut me off when I wanted to reboot, it's like, come on in, there's plenty of room. <laughs> and so, and so you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not agitated, you're not angry, and it makes you calmer, which is also a good thing because when you're calm, you can you know, solve problems, which is the problem is we have no food. Mm-hmm. And so you're not hungry because the, it's no, it's, there's, no, there's no benefit of being hungry. There's no benefit to human who is looking for food to be hungry because that's not helping. Mm-hmm. So hunger switches off. Now, if you're blending or if you're eating, then as soon as you put that fiber back in the body, you will switch back to the normal mode of, okay, now we've got to eat. So now we're going to tell Joe three hours time, four hours time, be hungry again. So you'll break that, that what I call plan B mm-hmm. scenario if you eat or blend anything. But as long as you stay on the juice and just drink the water filtered through plants, which is really what I'm talking about when I'm talking about juicing, you can go quite a long time. And now while you're on this, you are supercharging more micronutrients that your body has ever had in any single day of eating food. Because when you juice, you can put a lot of volume through your juicer. The other benefit that what's happening is your body starts, because it's much smarter than you'll ever be. You've got to think about it. If you graze your knee, you don't need to think about healing. You just let the body do it. Right. Get out of the way. But if you pick at that, you know, say you did it on your knee, you keep picking at it all the time. It's going to get infected and you could lose your leg and you could die. Mm-hmm. So as long as you get out of the way, the body will heal itself. Yes. And this is another phenomenon that happens is that when you do this and, and, and when, you're, when you're on a reboot, you are allowing, you are virtually getting out of the way. So things that you may have been eating, and, and let's face it, you know, if, 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 if I take someone on 60 days of a reboot and the next day, a week later after they've broken their fast properly and they've had lots of fruits and vegetables, if I give them a pizza, it's highly unlikely that that pizza eating in that one moment is going to do a lot of damage to them. But if someone who hasn't done a reboot has been eating pizza every day of their life, Every day they eat pizza, it's almost like they're picking the scab because they're constantly putting something in that is causing inflammation, that is agitating and causing some kind of chronic illness. But if we can break the cycle and if we can have a give the body enough time without those things going on, so stop the pizza, stop whatever it is. And when you juice fast, you're stopping so many things that... You don't really need to know what it is that you stopped because you're just stopping everything except the water and the micronutrients. And that allows the body this chance for what I would call internally the metaphor of that scab to heal. So that then when you come off the reboot, if it's a long one, um, generally speaking, like in my case, my autoimmune disease is completely gone. 
I, I, and I wouldn't say I'm healed because I feel that if I went back to my old ways that it would rear its ugly head. Sure. So I don't, I don't look at it as healed. I look at it as I'm managing it with a lifestyle where I don't suffer from it anymore. Yeah. And so that's in a nutshell. I know it's a long answer, but in a nutshell, a reboot is time traveling back to the days when feast and famine put yourself on a, neutral, a nutrition-based famine with lots and lots and lots of juice that's colors in all sorts of the different colors of Mother Nature's beautiful nutrition palette. And you are going to have sugar. And I know that sugar's got the big target on it right now. So try and get 25% of your juice from fruits and 75 or 80% from vegetables. Try and make sure that you're drinking lots of water. If you're on blood thinners, you don't want to do this. If you can get a doctor to monitor your salt levels, um, then that's important. We want to make sure that that with that. If you're going to do more than 15 days and you want to take a plant protein, we have a pea protein at Reboot, which is a protein powder. You want to add to your juices because we want to we want to make sure we got enough protein going into your body. And really, you know, we've had we've had four and a half thousand people do our program where they've where they've signed up and paid so that we know them. And then on top of that, there'd be hundreds of thousands of people that have gone out and done either 5, 10, 15 day, 20 day, 30 day, 60 day reboots that have had incredible results. And it makes sense because I haven't invented this. This is not something, oh, you know, I got into my laboratory and what about this? No, this is something that's been going on forever. And this is, it was this big is, in the 70s, wasn't it? It wasn't juicing. Forget the 70s. How about the year 70 or 70 BC or 770 BC or 5070 BC? This has been going on since the beginning of time because we haven't always had this access to food. So there's always been feast and famine. Every, mm-hmm. The way I like to think about it is that, you know, everyone listening to the show right now is... is um, is what's called a homo sapien. I mean, if you've got cats and dogs, well, they're not, they're not, they're not <laughs> really dogs. listening, right? <laughs> but, but, but anyone who understands, maybe a better way of saying it, who understands what's going on in our communication here is what's called homo sapien. Mm-hmm. Now, homo sapien, depending on if you, if you believe in evolution, which is I do, versus creationism, so let's just run with evolution for a moment, is that we're 220,000 years old. Now, that kind of means that we have 10,000 sets of grandparents that are homo sapien. Forget homo erectus, humanoids, and everything else going back four or five million years, just us as we are now. And so we have 10,000 grandparents that have swapped genetic material to make the magnificent us. Only probably half a dozen of those grandparents haven't gone through famines. And that's and I'm being generous by saying a half a dozen. Mm-hmm. You okay? never think of it like that. That's really interesting. So all of our ancestors have gone through periods where they haven't eaten for periods of time, and it didn't do them any harm because it created us, and we're still here. Yeah. So, you know, religion, Christianity, um, Hindu, Muslim, uh, Buddhists, they all have fasting. Fasting's a part of religion, and so. It makes a lot of sense to me. When dogs are sick, they don't eat. When horses are not well, they don't eat. Um, babies, actually, when they're not well, they have a temperature or they don't eat. So we are we have this pre-programming, if you like, where we kind of know that we shouldn't eat as much as we are. But because of the addictive and, and uh, the sugar, the fat and salt, and we've created this bliss point, which we're really good at in science, and because of the... The social pressures and because of the economic pressures and the way that this whole system set up that we have turned food very much into entertainment. And so we are at this, we, we, are, we, are, we are born in this moment in time where there are so many wonderful things going on. I mean, you know, look at it. You know, I flew in from Sydney yesterday. It took 15 hours. I got on a steel round tube and I watched movies. I had a meal. I had a sleep. <laughs> I was able to go to the bathroom and all going along at 700 miles an hour in the air, 40,000 feet above the ocean. And it still amazes me that that thing takes off in Sydney and lands in LA. I yeah. mean, it, you know, it's, it's still, it's still mind blowing. And so we live in this incredible time where all of these amazing things are going on, yet we have to be careful that we live in this time of the elevator, of the escalator, of the automobile, of the chair, of 
the Big Mac, of the In and Out Burger, of the pizza. <laughs> you know, the, we we live in this time where the access to calories is is never ever ever been so easy, and the ability to not spend any calories to do things has never ever ever been so easy. So we are set up um, where it really is set up for us to fail. And so mindfulness and being aware of that and understanding that is a huge step forward to just just comprehending that, that, okay, everything is set up for me to be foul, so I've got to really be on guard. I've got to like be conscious. I just can't let unconscious decisions take over. If I go out to lunch with people, I've got to really watch what I order. If I... If I go to the mall, maybe I don't drive around looking for that closest car park to the mall. Maybe I park as far away as possible and get some incidental exercise in. When I see the escalator elevator, maybe I'll look for the stairs. Just little things start to be more conscious of, and and that can have, over time, a, a quite a big effect. I feel like we're at the Church of Joe. Like, preach it, Joe. <laughs> like, we all need to worship right now. Okay, I'm... I don't mean to sound like that. No, in a good way. I love it. Like... Um, So I'm feeling really inspired. So I want to do my next juice fast. Susie, how long would you do it with me for? Oh, that's a good question. So I have a little, another story today, Mm -hmm. Joe, for you. Um, I was rewatching Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And I was inspired and I had some beautiful fruits and vegetables. I'm like, I'm going to go make a juice. And (laughs) I had, um, I got married last spring and we got rid of my juicer and kept my husband's. And I didn't know how to... I put it back together and something was wrong. There was a piece that wasn't fitting. And right. I was playing with it and I'm like, maybe this isn't isn't necessary because it looked right. So I started juicing and I put my <laughs> celery in, my cucumber, my apple, half an orange, and I cracked it. I broke the damn juicer. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I did get to ma- manage to get some juice out. And I was thinking about that today. I'm like, I've been thinking about doing a juice fast and I have never really made it past a day. I got so angry and ornery that first day and by the evening I was eating so you were experiencing exactly what he was exactly talking and about. I think so, I... so one of the best ways that I would suggest for you and, and look and this is the thing about fasting is that you don't necessarily if it's not broke why try and fix it you know what I mean so it's, it really has got to come down to why what's the purpose in it because it's not just about weight loss you know you will experience some weight loss but that's not really why i'm all so excited about it if you've got other ailments other issues there needs to be more than just pounds for the objective because if you're just doing it on a on a oh willy-nilly the power of of wanting to eat will take over and beat Mm -hmm. you every time Mm -hmm. that's so true that there has to be an objective there has to be a reason that you're seeing this through there has to be something really important to you Mm -hmm. that you hold dear with me it was about getting off medication it wasn't about losing weight Mm -hmm. it was about getting off my meds and getting well so that was what drove me to 60 days i would look at it very much from this ability that you're allowing your body to heal Mm -hmm. so let's let's take it a different way and let's assume that you feel good right eh. um i have started to feel you know i'm getting older i just turned 39 and i can no, tell that's real old yeah 39. i know i'm i wish i was 39 <laughs> <laughs> well, my, point, <laughs> my point is is that i i can start to feel that i eat pretty well i could be doing better but I would like a reboot. I would like to flush out my toxins. Mm-hmm. I would like to clean out my body and I would like to see how I feel after that. All right, so so let's just take one thing you said then, which is flush out toxins because this is an area that I, I, I'm very sensitive to because I know medical doctors and I speak to them regularly. So let's not think about flushing out toxins mm-hmm. okay? because your body does a really good job of that every day. Mm-hmm. Going to the bathroom, perspiring, breath, your body does an incredible job. In fact, you throw so much toxicity into your body that you're always detoxifying and okay, your body's so, doing that. So I want to pack myself with phytonutrients. So yes, but <laughs> here's another way that I would maybe think about about a way that's probably the way I like to approach it is that what are the what are the two um, biggest killers in the world today? Heart disease. Yep. Cancer. Cancer. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so what is the what are the two things that each of those diseases represent? Heart disease is effectively the hardening of arteries and its plaque building up and then effectively blocking the flow of blood to the heart and you know if it's major block then you'll have a you know cardiac infarction and your you know heart heart attack and drop dead. 
Uh, otherwise, you'll need a stent if they can pick it up or they'll need to do bypass or whatever. But, but heart disease and stroke effectively is our, our blood supply being blocked and not being able to circulate. And that's because we've laid down a lot of plaque. And so let's think about chipping away at that plaque. Let's think about having a period of time where we can really do some really good scrubbing on the plaque. Okay, so think about that. What's cancer? Cancer is cells that um, effectively are, we we all know that cells are always um, morphing into, you know, they're dying and they're becoming new cells. and, and, And what cancer is, is when cells come back not as they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. They they are um, a little bit wonky and they can Mutants. be... Pardon? Mutants. Mutants. And so you have this sometimes a cyst or some buildup of, of cancer. Now, you may have cancer now. I might have cancer now. We don't even know we've got cancer. I mean, I, I, I remember speaking to a cancer specialist who said, Joe, you're always cancering. I mean... Everyone's cancering using it in that language. As a verb, um, I know yeah, that's yeah. terrible. Well, he was he was explaining <laughs> the fact is that is that we're always doing it, but there's different stages, and what you don't want it to do is for it to start convincing other cells to be like this. This was like they do this and then they're gone, and mm-hmm. so we're con- we're constantly doing this. Um, but even if he's wrong, the point being is is that you don't know have you got buildup of some cysts or some growths or whatever in your body you don't know Mm -hmm. okay now what i'm convinced about is that when you fast your body eats away the things that it needs the least yeah it doesn't eat your eyeball it doesn't eat your tongue it doesn't (laughs) eat your gallbladder it doesn't eat your heart it doesn't eat your lungs it eats away at the stuff it needs the least so it doesn't eat away at the fat around your gut it eats away at the fat in your head or your hands or your ankles, your fingers, your toes, your feet. That's where it starts. Because it's like, we're going to hang on to this fat around the gut because we don't know what's going on. I mean, think about it from a logical evolution point of view. If you stored all the fat for your body in your hand and you lost your hand, then you've lost everything from the supply. Why wouldn't you keep it close to the organs Mm -hmm. so that if you did lose a limb or you did lose a hand, at least you can survive if you get a tourniquet on. Mm -hmm. So, so, I like to think of when I'm doing a reboot that this is the chance for my body to go around and self-digest the crap it doesn't need. Yes. So if you start thinking about a 10-day journey like that, Mm -hmm. it's a different story because now you're saying, well, if I did 10 days every year, I'm not allowing any um, tissue to build up or you know, cysts to start growing. Mm-hmm. Because I can tell you now, when I did my 60-day journey, I had warts and all sorts of things dropping off my body. They just like, disappeared. It's amazing. And, and so that's more of the way I would approach it. And so if you think about like, the clean out you're doing, not the, not, the, not the toxins and all that, that's not the way to think about it. Because your body self-digests. It mm. has to get the calories from somewhere. Yeah. So it's going to eat the muscle mass or the tissue, um, the fat or the protein. That's what it's going to eat because it has to convert that into calories. Mm -hmm. If you're only putting in five, 600 calories in your juice and you need 2,000, it's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I look at it that way. And now I can't prove it, but there is a great TED Talk and you can just go on TED Talk and and Google um, cancer cancer starving cells Mm -hmm. and... um, the, uh, the doctor will get on there and he'll explain that a, 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 a new technique is to starve cells yes. um, so that the cancer dies. So that's how I'd think about it. And, and you know, I, I would only do it on the basis that um, you mentally are in that position where you're saying, right, I'm going to try this because I want to achieve it. And it's not about weight loss yeah. and it's about that. Yeah. And you'll find that your joints will be a lot better. You'll get, you know, there's, as we get older, there's a lot of um, inflammation in our body. Mm-hmm. And this is a great way to get rid of a lot of inflammation. The biggest benefit I've found also besides a couple of pounds is really the mental clarity that comes along with it. I feel like I get so clouded sometimes and just five days I am so clear and I'm so able to 
absorb or download from the universe or access my creativity, whatever you want to call it, just after five days. The longest I've ever done is 10. So at some point I would like to do more than 10. But you're right, Joe, I need an intention. I need a reason. Why am I doing it? Do you know why you have that clarity? Why? Well, if you think about it, that's why religion took on this fasting. Fasting. Mm -hmm. They took it on. They said, hey, this is really good because this is like people getting in touch with you know, higher powers. Yeah. So but it it really, like. really what's going on is this is the alertness mm -hmm. for survival. So you are at, uh, at you are operating at survival mode. Mm -hmm. So any bit of information coming in, it's treated at a high priority to process, to find food. Mm -hmm. So clarity of mind. I mean, I write all my books while I'm rebooting. Because exactly. I'm yeah. just in the zone. Right. Like I am in oh, the zone. Wow. You become in the zone. You're a writer. I'm Susie's a writer. <laughs> I have a screenplay I've been working on. Yeah. yeah. Well, you get yeah. you get very much in the zone. I mean, it, it's a tough thing to do because it, it's really like taking your digestive system on a holiday. Yeah. And you think about it. When we go on holidays, that's the one thing we pack our digestive system because <laughs> we want to go and eat. We want to go and have fun. And it's so social. So you've got to really pick out the time. To do it, and and if you and, and the, the tip I would say to starting is also you know if you were going to do say seven days of fasting, I would for the first three days. So I'd make it a ten day plan. I wouldn't make it a seven, and I would do the first three days where you're only eating fruits and vegetables and blending and juicing. So you're doing all three. So you're sort of slowly yes. uh, getting rid of the coffee, the alcohol, the toast, or the granola or whatever it is that you're eating, yeah. and you might have a really balanced diet. Now, the more pain you go through, believe it or not, in those first three days is the more of a measure as to what your diet was like. Because <laughs> if you go uh -oh. through severe pain, then yeah. you might think, well, maybe what I'm doing isn't so good. Right. Yeah. You know, Because people who live on like a really strong, healthy, balanced diet, they don't report a lot of symptoms when they fast. They just feel hungry and a bit, you know, agitated, but they're not like, oh my god, I could right. murder, I could murder a banana right now, you know. Because, I was at the murderous stage. Yeah, yeah. I was definitely murderous when I did my half yeah. day. Well, we all we, look. Look, we're all. No one's perfect. I've never met anyone who's perfect, and I'm certainly not perfect. And I really enjoy and look forward to my reboots. I still do it three times a year, and I look forward to it. For I haven't how, done for how long? Well, I haven't done a long one. I mean, I was I was actually contemplating just just recently. I was thinking that the the last time I did a um a, a long one was in the movie, and I really enjoyed it so much that I, I'm I'm contemplating doing another long one this year. I'm, I'm really thinking about that. Um, it's going to be harder to do it um, for me now simply because of just that intention point of view. Um, but I'm sort of trying to take myself back like to how good I was feeling and how amazing I was in the 40s and the 50s and just that incredible journey that I was on. And so I, I'd like to try and get past the first 15 because I do 15 days now, 10 to 15, and I'm always ready to get off mm -hmm. in that sort of 10 to 15 day period. I'm like ready. So the, now to go f sort of 40 or 50 or 60, that's I'd have to overcome that, what my body's become used to, which yeah. is 10 to 15 days. Um, and so, yeah, and I, 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 I would think that that's something that, 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 would, that is probably, you know, maybe once a decade I should do a long one. Um, you know, but, but it's, a, it's, it's certainly... Um, something that I think a lot of people have forgotten and I think it can it's not a solution to weight loss it's not like oh my god just do this and you're fine this is about maintenance and so there's so many other things we need to do but this is a period of time where you are giving your body a break where it can allow the healing process to speed up on itself that works for me so how long I wanted the longest I've ever done was 10 so I would like to do 11 well, I've never you? gone past <laughs> three quarters of a day, so <laughs> I guess I can shoot for ten, or maybe I could. But well, we can, can shoot for well, ten. Well, why don't you? Or why don't in that case, if you've never done more than a day, I mean, my advice would be to shoot for five days. Okay. So okay. I would, I would go um, for you five days, and if you're going to, if you've done ten, mm -hmm. then I'd probably shoot for fourteen. You know? Okay. I wouldn't like try and just go one day extra. Yeah, yeah. I, I would go to the fourteen, which is two weeks. Yeah. But but I but you may not need to by the way you might be just good with ten. Well, I've got my book proposal due, so I got to start getting creative <laughs> at the end of March. <laughs> but, but, but five days would be a good time because you're going to do it tough for the first three, but yeah. then you're going to experience 
how great you're feeling on on the fourth and fifth day, and then you might say, you know, I'm feeling so good. I'll just do seven, right. but you, you you limit it by saying five. Yeah, and I'm and, not and setting myself up to fail. Correct, and yeah. as long as you do those two or three days um, prep, you're really ending up doing seven or eight days mm-hmm. without the other stuff. Yeah, no, but the prep is so important. Like Prep's I can't important. stress that enough. How much better you feel when you just start going to eating fruits and vegetables and drinking smoothies for the first couple of days. It's like preparing your body and you don't feel as bad. You go straight to juice and you get real sick real fast in a lot of cases. So that's great advice. All right, Joe, where can everyone find you online, tweet you, stalk you, follow you? Well, I'm at Joe the Juicer on Instagram and Twitter and Joe Cross on Facebook. I've got a public page up there. Rebootwithjoe.com is our website. The kids menu um, movie.com is our um, URL for the film. I Instagram at least once a day. I try to anyway, um, sometimes twice, but generally once a day and tweet. I do my best to follow and tweets I, I look at. If I have some downtime, I get on Twitter and try and answer questions and respond as best I can, like and retweet and favorite and so on. Um, yeah, that's that, that's probably the best place to find me. And, of course, I've got two movies that are on Netflix right now, and so they're on there, so you just got to put Joe Cross in the search or look for my movies, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, and Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead 2. And this one will be on Netflix later in the year, awesome. the kids' menu. But from between now, it's about the tour. It's about getting out across the country and sharing it and um, hope to see people out there on the road with me. Well, first of all, Food Heals Nation, if you have not seen Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, the first one and the second one, do yourself a favor Put that on your Netflix queue right now. Watch both those movies, and then you'll be prepared to go watch the kids' movie in theaters. Let's see. I have some dates here. Yeah, I'm going to Encinitas, L.A. I'm doing Denver. I'm doing um, Dallas. I'm doing Chicago. I'm doing um, Atlanta and Miami and D.C. and Cleveland and Philly, New York and Long Island and Boston. So that's what I'm doing in America. Then I go over to the U.K. and a bit of Europe and some dates in Australia. Awesome. So the LA one will already be over, unfortunately, by the time this one comes out. But yeah, we have Miami on March 15th, Atlanta March 16th, Long Island March 19th, Washington March 21st, Philly March 22nd. Wow, you're going to be traveling so quickly together. Boston March 23rd. All All right. One on top of the other. Yeah, well, you know how to do it. You just juice through it. Unfortunately, you can't bring a juice through airport security, though. And so as soon as you arrive, you have to go find a place to get a juice, right? That's my problem. Yep, yep. But, you know, <laughs> the good news is now there's lots of juice bars across the country. So, you know, it's it's certainly here to stay. That is um, true. I'm excited about the world of juicing. I think it's really it's really going to that next level now. And yeah. so um, it, it's really it's really good. I wish it was a different word, the juice, because it gets confused with the juice that's like, you know, orange juice and grapefruit juice and there's lots of juices um that are out in the stores that are canned juice that's heated juice that's reconstituted juice and you know we, we want to try and stay away from that we're talking about we're talking about fresh juice that's either been um put through a juicer or someone else has done it for you or a juice bar or or an hpp juice like say evolution fresh juice um that that's the sort of juice where we're looking to try and get people to get excited about and consume as part of a normal day because we've talked a lot about rebooting today but there is also the idea of just adding juice mm-hmm. into your normal regular day which is really what most people are doing most yeah. people are not going out there and doing crazy 60 days or 30 days or whatever of just drinking juice but you know that's a reboot but generally speaking adding juice is a regular part of a green juice a day or a purple juice or um, those sorts of things can be a really huge benefit to your health Right. This ain't your minute made. So let's not get that confused. So thank you for bringing that up because that's a really good point. You know, I juice every day. If I don't juice, I feel off because my body is now used to getting that. I get that a lot. And I I mean, I understand that. But a lot of people say that it becomes it becomes it's almost like I mean, it really is the true vitamin water. You know, it really is. I mean, that's what it is. Yes. Um, And, you know, no one does it better than Mother Nature. And you are, you know, sunlight is this mixture between the nutrients in the soil, the sunlight, the water that comes down, and the air in our atmosphere. Those four things combine to create these beautiful plants that harness all of this nutrition that our bodies need. I mean, it's not like, oh, yeah, you can go without it. No, you can't. You need it. Like, it's essential. 
It's absolutely essential. And so if you don't put it in, you'll, you'll pay the consequences. Your body will start to break down. And, you know, when I, when I look at the world out there now, I mean, I'm a pretty binary person, and everyone listening to this show can either put themselves in one of two categories. They can put themselves in the broken category, where they're broken, or, no, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm in great shape, I, and therefore not broken. So people are either broken or not broken. And that can change on a daily basis, yeah. right? And we're talking not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. There's there's lots of ways you can apply that, but very binary, broken or not broken. If you show me someone who's who's broken, there's a real good chance that they've got two relationships in their life that are broken. Mm-hmm. And that's the relationship with plants and the relationship with themselves. Mm-hmm. So, so true. Mm-hmm. Say that again. Say that again. So, uh, well, <laughs> you, I know you're going to ask me what's tweetable or what's yes, your thing. And, and it really is like, you know, I, I put it down to love your plants and love yourself. Because well, then i got to Snapchat this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can put it down. So, you know, you you got to love yourself and you got to love your plants. Because you show me someone who is whole and not broken, it's a good chance that they do love themselves and they do love their plants. Makes sense to me. Love yourself and love your plants. That would be my tip. I think that's on my Instagram, I think, from memory in my... All right, either so... Either in my Twitter or whatever. Yeah, is that your tweetable or you got another one? Oh, well, I've got lots, you know. Okay, give us a few. <laughs> well, okay. Now we're under pressure. Like, I mean, I mean, I think that the one of the one of the quotes that I I don't know who told me, but I heard a long time ago, and I think it's really good to live by is that you know you don't learn anything new; you just remember what you've forgotten. And I think there's a lot to that in that we all have the answers within. We all know inherently what is the right thing to do in big choices in our life, and it's just a matter of finding the people around us to help bring those answers to the surface. And when you are living a life where you are not broken and you are whole and you are loving yourself and you are loving your plants and you are aware, you have mindfulness around you when you are moving, when you are doing all of these things that can, that can lead to wellness and, uh, and optimum health, you tend to attract other people like that. And when you are around other people like that, it's amazing the power that can that, that can transcend and trying to find answers to things that have been locked away inside you can suddenly come to the surface and so you kind of knew it but you just didn't know how to get it to the top and so i'm a big believer in that and so my, my other lo- lovely quote is lady luck follows a person of action so if you want to get something done you know luck plays a big role in life i mean i got lucky with my movie no question i made it the right time with technology everything sort of came together but if I hadn't done it, it wouldn't have happened. So you've got to, you've got to, you've got to go out and do stuff. You've got to, you've got to take action to get lucky. And I'd also say, you know, it's the old adage that truth will set you free. But I really think that being true and 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 speaking the truth um, is a really positive and important thing to do for happiness. And then you know, this whole, you know, I can talk forever about the internal conversations we have with ourselves, particularly that first one when you see that mirror in the morning. You know, everyone beats themselves up. So many people have a go at themselves. You know, you got to quit that. You got to start looking at all the positive, amazing things about yourself. Not just focus on the twenty percent that that's probably not as where you'd like it to be, but focus on the eighty percent that is amazing. And so these these are all things that you know you've heard them before, but I think it's it helps. It's helpful to bring all of those things in. And what I have found on people doing reboots that if you're on day ten or day eleven or day twelve of a reboot, there ain't not much negative going on in your head. You're feeling amazing. You're feeling proud. You're feeling positive, and you are you are what I would call on fire. I mean, you know, you got fire trucks following you around. You're so much on fire. So it's 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 a it's, a it's a it's a great. Really well, happening? yeah, you can get those firemen. So so yeah it's yeah a, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a it's it's a great feeling. Those are all amazing. I hope that Food Heals Nation tweets those to Joe. Fantastic at Joe the Juicer. I'll be there. At Joe the Juicer, follow him. You can see his film in theaters in 13 cities, and then it will be on Netflix when? It'll be on iTunes in a few months, and then it'll be on Netflix later in the year. Perfect. So you can get it pretty soon on iTunes, and then everything Joe Cross is on Netflix. Go there right now. Watch his films. Watch his films. You will not be disappointed. I appreciate that. That'd be nice. You will not be disappointed. (laughs) We love that. Thanks for being here, Joe. Thank you, girls. I've Thank enjoyed you, it very much. It's been a lot of fun. And it's great to see that you guys are doing such a great work and spreading the word about how food heals. Thank, Thank you. you. Juice on. Hashtag join the reboot. 
All right, great. That's our show. For all the show notes, go to foodhealsnation.com slash 73. Join our private Facebook group at foodhealsgroup.com, and we will see you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.